Hey masters, welcome back to Join Media. Welcome back to another amazing video. In this particular case about Playwright Python and how to perform API testing using PyTest and Async IO. We're gonna understand in depth um, the documentation. I want to explain you what is happening with this, how you can start your automation and how you can start using the API testing using this amazing library, right? Um, it is important to mention that Playwright um, or the API testing based on the Playwright documentation, it is important because you can test your server API, you can prepare the server site, stay it before visiting the website application in test, or you may want to validate the server site post conditions after running some actions in the UI to make sure that the changes that you made in the UI are correctly applied in the database or in the backend API, right? Uh, in order to perform and get the, the access to, to send requests to an API, you need to create an API request context. It is important. And, and this is the reason of why um, you may want to check this official documentation. You're gonna see a lot of uh, examples and parameters that you can use. And it is important as always to check the official documentation in this particular scenarios, right? Uh, it is important to mention too that I'll be using the Todos application. This application can be cloned from this repository. You're going to understand and see different uh, steps that the, and the installation steps over here. You only have to clone the repository and you're going to get an instance in your local host 3000 like this one with a to-do application. And well, for example, if you want to, you can create a to-do over here. For example, make a new video right and you're gonna see a request over here that is a post request mm -hmm. it is a request that it is actually sent to the local host 3000 but also it is pointing to the to do's endpoint over here you can see the status code and so on but it is important to check the payload you can see that we have like a, a payload already predefined that you need to satisfied right you are you're gonna need a completed key with a true or false value you're gonna need an id and and also a title that's important and you are gonna understand why i'm telling you this in a few seconds okay let's go ahead and, and take a look at the code this one great um, in order to uh, work with this with pytest and and play right okay we're gonna need to understand some concepts and I highly recommend you to check this documentation over here. I'll leave this repository in, in the description of this video because you can you may want to check the API request context, Python F strings, Pytest features, Python, Python function annotations and typings. You may want to do it or I'll try to explain you in a high level way <laughs> what is going to happen over here okay let's go ahead and, and see what we need to import the first thing is the the typing module and i'll be importing the generator okay that's something that you need to well actually review but i'll try to explain you in a few seconds okay i'll be needing also the pytest library and also well i'll be using the sync api from playwright and well since i have a um, well for, named the from over here, I'll need to import some classes from this particular module, right? I'll be needing the Playwright instance and also the API request context, which is the module or the API that I just told you that is required to interact with an API in this particular case, okay? You're gonna notice that I have like a couple of code blocks over here. The first one is a PyTest annotation, right? And to be specific, it is a fixture. And as you can see over here in the comment, a fixture is, or actually provides a defined, reliable and consistent context for the tests. We have a couple of options over here. We can be, or we can have a fixture uh, for the function or the session scope. In this particular case, it is a session scope. And as I'm telling you, go ahead and check the documentation to understand the different possibilities that you have. But for this matter, we're gonna need this particular session scope, okay? Then I'll be creating a function over here that is named API request context, okay? And you're gonna see that below in the line 37, I do have another function that is named test post to do. And this is basically the, the regular test that we can perform using PyTest. We have to declare a function, but in this case, you're gonna see that I'll be requiring a parameter. And this is the API request context fixture 
function that I have declared before. Okay, and you can see that in this particular case, it is not returning anything. But it is important to mention that you are gonna need the fixture because if you don't declare and do the configurations, it is not going to work at all. So that's why I am going to declare all this code inside of the fixture that I'll be creating, okay? So let's go ahead and check what is happening here in the API request context fixture function. You can see that um, I'm uh, well, sending the playwright context as a parameter, and then it is gonna be returning a generator over here. As you remember, the generator is part of the module typing, and if you want to understand what is a typing or what is happening in this module, you can go ahead and check this particular link because there is a lot of information but um why it is important the typing in this particular case because it is a predefined type and it allows the compiler to check the code before the compiling and running the program that's basically what is happening here and this is the recommended way to do this to do this with um with playwright okay and Python in this particular case, okay? Then you can see that we're gonna be doing some stuff inside of the function over here. And for example, the first step is going to be declare a variable that we're gonna be using uh, then, right? As you can see in the line 32 and 34. And this re um, this variable is gonna be the the result of the playwright that requests that new context okay and as you probably remember i told you that we needed to create an, a new api request context before we can um or after actually right no before <laughs> yeah before we do some api requests okay and you can see that um mm, let me see yeah, you can see that over here, what I'm sending is basically a base URL, right? In this particular case, I'll be using the localhost 3000 because it's, that's the that's the place where we are exposing the 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 UI, right? The, the, the URL itself or the website itself. And then as soon as I have done this new context, I can yield the response so we can access the, the request context when we want to do it because we're gonna be sending or actually accessing this by the by the parameter, right? When we create the script, uh, the test itself, right? So we need it or we need to yield the request context. Yeah, that's the rule. And then we, th this is a, another um, function that I discovered in the official documentation, which is request context that dispose and basically these methods discard, discards all stored responses because well the if we don't do this it, it it actually saves a lot of information cookies and so on and this could be useful for different um if we have different test scenarios right or different test functions to dispose um well the data that we have in memory that's important all right, guys, um, let's continue with the function itself, the test post to do. And as you can see, well, we are receiving the fixture. That's correct. And I am declaring here a dictionary with the data that we need as a payload for our request. OK, if you remember, this is the request that I need to do. Request URL is uh, the, the URL with a to do's endpoint at the end. And then you can see that this is a post request, okay? And we have here the payload part, and it is basically an object, speaking in JavaScript terms, <laughs> right? And we need to complete it, the ID and the title keys and its values. In this particular case, we're gonna be handling this in, in Python terms as a dictionary, right? And you can see that I'm just creating the values that we need to send to um, the, to send the request correctly. And then as soon as you have the data that you need for your endpoint uh, already set and, and defined, you're gonna need to create, for example, a variable like this one, new to do. It could be named responses. I, to be honest, it is the same, the same um, it could be a better name actually, response, because it is gonna have the response to the API request, post request, okay? I'm doing this uh, post request like this one, right? And you're gonna notice that um, I'll be sending a couple of parameters over here. I'll be sending the endpoint to do's, right? Because I have declared already the base URL over here. It is gonna do something like this 
to do, right? But I'll be handling the endpoint in every single uh, endpoint in case the base URL, URL changes, right? That's important. And then we have the data or the payload that we need to send, okay? And as you can see, well, I am just sending the dictionary that I just created before. Mm -hmm. Now that I have done the request, I, I'm going to capture the response in the new to-do variable. I'm going to check if the new to-do is okay or not, okay? And then you, I'm, the thing that I'll be doing is create another variable named to-do's response, okay? And it is going to contain the response, which is this one over here. Let me show you this, the response. It is going to return a JSON with the same data that I have just sent in this endpoint case, right? It is going to be depending on your SNR. And well, I'll be printing this, this value. So I'll be printing the, the new to-do variable with the response itself and then the, uh, the to-do's response in JSON format, okay? So let's go ahead and check if it works or not. In order to make this or actually work with this, I'll be needing the command pytest. And then I need to access the pytest folder that I where I have the tests. And that's basically it. I'll be executing this and you're going to notice that now in the UI, right, we do have a new list item in, in the UI, right, which is the test one. Actually, if I inspect the to do's API over here, let me show you this. I have a new item in the database, right, in the API. And that's, uh, that's the, the thing that I wanted to show you. It is working perfectly fine. And as you can see in the console log, we have the to-do var, right? The response bar over here, the API response and the status and the status text and the URL that I were, well, sent the, the, the request. And also in the next line, we have the response in the, the JSON response, right? The, yeah, basically that's the, the, the content of the response the body. That's a correct way to, do, to call it, I think. And that's basically it. It is working fine. Now I'll be uh, explaining to you guys how you can do the same stuff, but now using um, async IO. Okay. It is kind of similar, actually easier, but uh, well, since it, it doesn't have a this framework, I'm not sure if this is the best approach as possible because PyTest has a lot of inbuilt functions that, well, actually is, is easy for, for all of the, for, well, it has a lot of structure, structure already implemented, right? But let me give you this another example because it is totally valid. Um, to use as async IO, right? I'll be importing basically the, the module over here, right? And also I'll be using a different API from Playwright, which in this case is async API, okay? Uh, as you can see in the, in the last test, I was using the sync API, but in this case, I'll be using async. And well, I'll be importing the as async playwright a uh, function, okay, and also the playwright context over here, the class. Mm -hmm. So uh, as you can see in the test, I'll be needing a couple of um, functions over here, okay. I'll be needing a, a function, an asynchronous function named run, and this run um, function is going to be receiving the playwright context that I have just imported before, okay. Let's open this, and you're gonna notice that um, it, it is actually easier, right? You can see that I have declared a variable here, which is API request context. So I can open a new context and and well, actually have a contact with the with the API. And as you can see, well, I'll doing something like like this. I'm I'm using the playwright. A parameter, the, the class itself, the instance, I'll be using the method request and the also the method new context. And I'm just sending the base URL um, parameter over here. Also, uh, I have created the dictionary with the data of the, or actually the payload that I need, right? For this particular endpoint, of course, you're going to need something else uh, if you're working with other API. And then, uh, well, I have created a, a variable named response. And as you can see, what I'm doing here is basically the same stuff. I'm using the API request context using await as a prefix, right? And I'll be using the post request method. So I just need to specify the endpoint, the data, and I'll be having the same response over here. And also you can check the print logs in your console. Um, 
Now that I have done this, it is pretty similar to the thing that I, that I did with PyTest, right? But now using an, a sync and a wait uh, syntax. Also, I'll be needing to declare a main function where we can send the playwright a synchronous uh, context so we can run this as a main, right? And then using a syncio.run, you only have to call the main function and it is gonna work perfectly fine. Let's go ahead and check how you can do this, how you can execute it. Uh, well, the way to do it is going to be using the word or the command Python, then enter where you have to test a scenario. In my case, it is inside of the folder asyncio. I'm gonna show you this in a few seconds. And then I need to access or actually write down the, the name of the test. As you can see, um, the, the name of this test is test post to do. Okay, let's go ahead and, and do it. There it is. Now that I have done this, you can see the lock response. The status is 201, okay? And we don't have an assertion error right now, right? And if I check the UI, I do have a new to do here named test, and it is working perfectly fine. So as you can see, uh, you can access all this information for free in my GitHub repository. If you see, I do have uh, some examples before uh, understanding or actually explaining to you how you can work with PyTest uh, with a simple async asynchronous API. I have done some examples with checkboxes, clicks, options, and radio buttons. If you want to go ahead and check that video, you can do it too. And under API, you have the, the, the two approaches using AsyncIO and PyTest. So guys, thank you very much. If you, well, actually are watching until the, this point of the video, if you are watching until the point of, until this minute of the video, I just wanted to say thank you. Please subscribe and let me know in the comment section your opinion. If there is something that could be improved, I'll be more than happy to hear your feedback as well. Thank you very much, guys. See you in the next one and take care. Bye-bye.